and today is the last day. So let's hope it's like this is my first Euro Python presentation. Let's hope I, you know, do good. So uh, this talk is about scientific computing using Cython. So I'm gonna uh, go around like some basic overview of what Cython is, how can you use it, and uh, how can you specifically use it in the scientific computing world. So I am Simi Moria. I work at Credible Health. So it's a startup in India. So we work on like cancer reporting. So uh, basically, uh, we work on uh, like de cancer detection in brain, liver, and lung. So the idea is to connect deep learning with cloud computing. So you can actually get all the matrices and dashboard directly through your web browser. So. Okay, you can't hear me? No. Okay, I'll be just near to the mic. Uh, am I audible now? Yes. Okay, perfect. So what this talk is about, uh, so we'll just go through step by step what is Cython, how like we'll unleash the Cython superpowers, and we'll try to build our first Cython module, and uh, we'll see how Cython, how Cython provides like support for NumPy, and we'll unleash more superpowers, and there's a project demo at the end, CYVL feat. So I worked on this project last summer uh, for Portland State University. I actually wrote a wrapper for VL feat. It's a library for computer vision, so it has like all the major vision algorithms like uh, SIFT and uh, yeah, VGG, uh, and yeah, similar to that. So okay. So what is Siphon? Like it's an um, it's actually a static compiler for both Python programming language and the extended, extended Cython programming language. So it makes writing C extension for Python as easy as Python itself. Um, so we'll unleash the superpowers now. So, okay, the first superpower is you can, uh, the, the, when you use Cython, your Python co code will actually be able to like, call C, C++ code back and forth. It talks to it like natively. And you can easily tune like uh, Python code into like you can optimize the performance by adding static type declarations. Let's see how we do that. Yeah. So this is a pure Python code. It acts, it's a simple integration function. So yeah, it's pretty easy. So now you have to spot the differences here. So what do we have added? We have uh, added a type to i, s, and dx. So we have pre-declared the types, and we have done that by using cdef and not simple def. So cdef is basically, you use there actually three uh, like, uh, like you know, similar, uh, you know. So there is a def, there is a cdef, and there is a cpdef. So I'll explain it to them, uh, I'll explain them later. Let's look at just cdef. So in a nutshell, cdef is basically when you're uh, dealing with C stuff, and there is no, you don't have to deal with Python objects. So yeah, then that's when you use CDEF, and that's, uh, it, you'll be able to actually uh, harness the uh, actual performance of uh, CPython runtime when you use CDEF. So you have uh, declared, uh, no, so you have defined the type of I, S, and DX, and uh, how does it help? So, so whenever there is a like performance critical code, you have to like, you have lots of loops and lots of computation. So you add static types, declarations. The, it actually allows uh, to, uh, actually, uh, Cython just bypasses the uh, C Python API calls, and it just runs everything in C. So the code that Cython generates now, it's more, uh, you know, more optimized and has better performance. So typically how Cython works is it's basically uh, you write everything. In Python, you write everything in .py file. In Cython, you write it in .pyx. So you, uh, you can just copy paste a pure Python code into a Cython file .py, that is .pyx, and it would run. So this won't like, give you uh, like really good speed up, but you can do that. Like it's, uh, if you want more uh, optimization, you can actually include types, just as we did here. So just copying this particular, uh, this particular code in .pyx gives uh, like 35% improve, speed improvement. So, and yeah, by adding some static types, it's actually like speed is like 
uh, four times uh, than the, as compared to the core Python. So yeah, I talked about def, cdef, and cpdef. Let's look at them in detail. Uh, def is basically, yeah, it's Python. So it, called, it is called directly from Python, and it takes Python objects arguments, and it returns a Python object. So there is no, you don't have to deal with C anywhere, so yeah. And cdef, it's, yeah, it's basically C. So where Cython functions, like you intend them to be like pure as pure C functions, you want actual C performance, you use cdef. But you have to be very careful. You cannot, uh, like at that, when you are using cdef, you should, like that particular patch should not deal with any Python object. So uh, that you might run into a problem if you do that. So the generated code, uh, like, so when you uh, compile a dot .py, dot, uh, like, Cython file, it generates a dot .c, and then it, uh, you can, con con like, it gets converted to dot .so, which is a shared object. So in, in Linux, you, you, and then you can directly import that .so in the Python session by doing an import, simple import. We'll come to that, too. So cpdef, it's basically both def and cdef. So, uh, so it, uh, there is a trick here. It actually uh, recognizes both Python and C code. So when there is a C code, uh, it, uh, you know, uh, it recognizes, okay, it's C code. We can, it, it can actually do some early binding. And when you are dealing with Python objects, you, so it uses dynamic binding, and yeah, it's kind of gets slow. So it's like Python then too. So uh, yeah. It can directly import C, C++ libraries uh, using C import. So you can just do C import, uh, libc, something. You can, you can directly import. We'll have, we'll show, I'll show you an example later. So yeah, you can actually integrate with existing C, C++ code. Uh, so you have, say you have a library in C, and you want to use it, like you want to create a Python interface for that library. You can do that by using Cython. Uh, We'll look, to, look into that too, and just, you know, unleashing all the superpowers. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so where's the magic? Like, how does Cython do, uh, what's so special about it? So the main feature in Cython is the, like, the optional static type declarations. You don't have to declare them every time. It's, yeah, they are optional. So the source code gets converted into, like, optimized C, C++ code. And this allows like very fast program execution with you know programmer pr productivity since you are using a Python-like syntax. So what's the motivation behind using Cython? So this is a really cool diagram I borrowed from uh, Advanced Python Summer School. It happened in 2012. Uh, so uh, so there's ease of use and y-axis, and there's a speed on x-axis. So speed, uh, so when you're using like low lang low level languages like like you know Fortran or something. So uh, they give you speed, and with Python you get ease of use. You want to find somewhere like a middle way out. So that's where Cython is. That Cython exists. So, okay, let's get to the code directly. So, first one is Python core, second one is C, C, or C, yeah, yeah. So, third one is, yeah, Cython version. So, there's just few, there are just few differences when you compare the Python and Cython code, just there's one cdef. Uh, this gives, you know, 80% speedx and uh, when you compare it to Python, and, uh, like native Python code. So this is like a really sloppy function that I wrote. Uh, you can add few more optimizations. We'll come to that slowly. So Cython, where is it used? So there are many uh, big, big projects which use Cython. One is NumPy. You might have heard of NumPy. And as there is an AstroPy as well. It's not an example, but yeah, it does. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's like coding in C and Python at the same time. Okay, we'll come to the use cases slowly. Am I going too fast? Just let me know if I am. Yeah, okay, thank you so much. So uh, library wrapping. I have like, said enough like again and again that you can wrap libraries. Uh, so uh, for example, I'll give you an example. So in C, uh, when you're writing something in C, you have like, the structure is like you have a .c and .h. In Cython, you have .pyx and .pxd, the analogous files uh, for those. And uh, let's see how we can do that. OK. So the second use case is when you have performance-critical code. I have explained this already again and again. So 
the common procedure is when you really need speed, just, you know, uh, you can use a compiled language like C, C++, and then wrap the whole code in Siphon. Instead of, like, directly doing it in Siphon, like, it'll give you, like, really good speed. And, yes, uh, the third use case uh, is, okay, it's use case one, I'm sorry. So, uh, who knows about the Jill? I think everybody does. Okay, that's great. So, uh, Jill is basically, it's a global interpreter lock. So, it's... What it does, uh, it's kind of lim like when the lock is acquired, uh, it limits the thread performance. You won't be actually, if, even if you're running your program on like a multi-core CPU, it won't be able to like harness the power, the total power. So yeah. So there is a solution that Cython provides to break out of the chill wherever required. So let's see. So these are the unwritten rules of Python. You don't talk about chill. You actually, you do not, and seriously, don't even <laughs> mention the Jill. So, so let's get into an example. So this is a really, uh, this is a small function which actually keeps a CPU busy. So it does a lot of computation again and again. So it takes 6.7 seconds to run on like my laptop. Uh, now, uh, see, uh, this is a sequential one. There's, there are no threads involved. This is a really simple function. Now, let's consider the threaded version. And um, yeah, there are two threads, and it takes 11.1 seconds. And this, this should not, this is not what you expect, right? So what happened? What happened here? Uh, OK, so it actually, what happens is, uh, when you, uh, you run it on a multi-core CPU and multi-core processor, you actually expect to, like, the script to run like nearly half time, but, or at least, in equal, at least in the equal time as of the sequential version, but it's not happening. Because uh, the threaded version suffers from a very bad behavior where the OS tries, the operating system tries to desperately schedule the two threads on different cores, but because of the gel, the lock, only one runs at a time, and whereas the other is moved like across the cores endlessly, it keeps, you know, uh, it tries to allocate it to any core, but it just can't. So that's how it takes so much time. So what's the solution? Uh, Cython provides a really good uh, context manager. It's known as with no gel. So uh, the catch is like uh, you can use it uh, when it does not touch any Python object. So let's see how we can use it. So this is a, a function, the implementation of the same function. Uh, it, uh, like it has different computation. It's like a bit more uh, time taking. So, yeah, so if you have this with no gel, and you can see in the busy underscore sleep underscore no gel. So, we use this context manager with no gel. So, um, now uh, this, you can see underscore the last function, it's implemented in like pure C because you, you're using C def everywhere, you're declaring all the types. So, it's not Python, uh, it's not, it's like, yeah, it's almost C. So, the performance is actually. Uh, increase so much, a, a lot. So let's see. Yeah, this is, you can actually, uh, an, uh, you can use Jupyter Notebooks to uh, get these uh, yellow, th this is actually, uh, when you use Scythe, like when you compile it using like a minus A flag, it creates uh, like, this is uh, like yellow, yellow lines. The more yellow it is, the more Python interaction is happening. So you can see uh, in line number 10, there is almost no Python interaction because, yeah, you have declared everything. So this is like super fast. And there are the number one and number two are equally yellow. So they are dealing with Python objects somewhere. Yeah, they, actually they are. That's why. So, so one tip that you can take is you can decrease the yellowness of these lines if you want to optimize your code. So that's one of your, like, if you want to optimize, you just... Uh, use the minus A flag and get these results and see where you can actually use, actually there is a need for optimization. So, yeah, we'll build or we'll cite like a really small program. So I have, yeah, there's a lot, I have told you like there's a PYX file and it gets converted to dot C and then dot C is converted to dot SO or dot PYD on Windows and if you can import it directly into a Python session. Let's see. Uh, you can import it, like you can build uh, using different methods. You can use just utils. You can use pix import, at, and it's really cool uh, tool, but you don't want to use it on production. I don't know. Uh, we don't use it. 
Third is Jupyter Notebook. Yeah, it's the most common way. That's the way I use it. So yeah, this is a simple Hello World script. So you have a simple, uh, this is actually Pyfo uh, Python. You can, as I told you, you can copy paste into a Python file and you can, uh, it will run. So uh, this is, there's a line the, from Cython.bill import Cythonize. It does all the work for you. It's uh, like, like if you can, if you want to import it into the Python session, uh, it, the Cythonize does all the work for you. So you use like extension module is equal to Cythonize, and there that's where you're using your Cython file that dot .pyx. So yeah, and when you use this minus minus in place. What it does, it creates a .so file in your current directory, so you can directly import it from there, and it would work. So yeah, congratulations, you have built your first Cython, uh, you know, module. Uh, yeah. Next, yeah, you can use pix import as well if you don't want to go through all that procedure of like writing a dist utils and everything. You can just have a .pyx file somewhere and you can just use pix import and import hello and it would work. So it's a really easy way to do that. Okay, so what are the conclusions that we drive? Uh, naive Cython means uh, when you just paste the Python code into the Cython file. So um, it does speed up things, but it's not, you know, you probably don't just, uh, you don't opt you didn't opt for Cython to just get a like 1.8x increase. And so you probably might want to uh, tweak it more. So you can optimize Cython is where you have type declarations where you are actually dealing with CDF and other uh, modifications. So CPDEF gives a really good improvement over DEF, but CDEF is where actual power is. So it's really valuable, but you have to be very careful when you're using it. So Cython CD, CDEF is uh, almost, yeah, it's almost equal to the C version of that Python code. It's the best attempt, like, to actually increase the performance, but, yeah. Uh, okay, now let's move slowly, slowly to the scientific computing world. So NumPy and Cython. Um, Actually, Cython provides a really fast access to NumPy arrays. So it has a C-level uh, type, which is known as typed memory view. You might have, how many of you know memory? What's memory view? Okay, just two. Okay, anybody else? I, okay, great. So uh, memory view is uh, just, okay, it, uh, it's like similar to a buffer protocol. You don't have to, like, uh, you, like, you can actually read and uh, get, like, get the contents of particular, say, array without, uh, like, you know, don't, you, m memory view is just like an interface. You don't need to copy it somewhere or you can just access it, you can read it. So, uh, so the type memory view is kind of similar to the NumPy array buffer support and yeah, Cython actually allows you to work with buffers without even knowing, like, without even getting into the details of it. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. And a type, okay, so, because a type memory view is actually designed to work with the buffer protocol, it kind of supports every buffer producing object efficiently, and, yeah, so it allows sharing a buffer data without copying. So, Okay, so we'll go, these are like, okay. So now when you have type memory views, the cat gets a unicycle. Let's see how, it, how we improve this unicycle, this mode of transport. So, okay. So let's suppose we want to work with like a one dimensional buffer and in Cython. So we do not care like how data is created at the Python level, we just want to access it in an efficient way. So let's create a def function in Cython that has a typed memory view argument. There we go. So this double parentheses and a colon uh, denotes a memory, uh, typed memory view. So you have actually, you're actually passing a memory view as an argument to a function. So, okay, so yeah. And you might want to, so, so you can see there are a few optimizations like static type declarations. You are actually, uh, defining the types of i and total 
Uh, why do we do that? So i is actually the loop variable. So you probably uh, want to, like, uh, you know, oh, we'll come to that later. Okay, I have a full explanation of that. So we are, at, okay. So yeah, so yeah, here the memory view actually attempts to access the object's underlying data buffer. So if the past object cannot provide a buffer, that is like, it's it probably it might not it doesn't support the protocol then a value error would be raised and if it does uh, then it means it supports the protocol so this was uh, this is actually uh, the next one is actually the same code but with few more optimizations you have tweaked more so when you are iterating through a tight memory view cython it treats it as a general python iterator so it actually calls Python C API for every, every single access. So we can do better. So we were doing it here. We were actually, uh, it's, uh, it's considered as a Python iterator. We are calling the API every time. So how can we do better here? So the type memory views are designed in such a way that you don't have a Python overhead every time. So it's like, yeah, it's C style. It's, it's C style uh, way of accessing things. So this version has a much better performance. Probably uh, if you make a, like one, uh, an array with like a million numbers, and if you want to add them and like, uh, like by doing iteration. And if you use this function for that, it actually sums the argument. So if foo is an array of like a thousand objects, a uh, thousand numbers, and you, this, uh, uh, this if say it takes say two milliseconds, this will take uh, one less. I tried it, so I had I didn't include the example, so I thought I would explain it like this. Uh, there is one more thing. The Cython actually in this case Cython generates a code that bypasses this Python C API calls and like indexes into the underlying buffer directly. So this is the like source of our large speed up, but we can still do better always, so optimization never stops. It's a never-ending process. I learned it from Andrew. <laughs> I attended his workshop yesterday, so, no, day before yesterday. So, yeah. Uh, okay, so now when you have uh, this kind of uh, speed up, our cat gets a good bicycle and it can do gymnastics. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit better improvement now. Uh, you can do uh, a lot. Uh, you can actually um, increase the performance by, but you have to trade uh, the safety. Let's see how. Uh, so every time we access our memory view, Cython checks that like the index is in bounds. So if it's out of bounds, Cython raises an index error. Also, like the Cython allows us to index into memory views with negative indices. So just like the Python less, the wrap index wraparound. So in our foo function here. We iterate through a memory view once, and we do not do anything fancy. It's just a rather simple thing. So we know, here we know ahead of time that we never going to index, like we never index with an out of bounds or negative index condition. So we can actually instruct Cython to turn off these bounce, bounce check for better performance. So to do so, we use the Cython special module with the bounce check and wraparound compiler directives. So we have, I have modified the code here, yeah. So it's the same uh, fu foo function, and now we have uh, like original, we have the original definition, but we have a new block or context manager here, which actually turns off the bounds and wrap around checking when we are accessing our memory view. The result is uh, like really small performance improvement, uh, but more better efficient code generation. It is up to us that we ensure that index doesn't go out of bounds. If it does, uh, if you, or, or you use like negative indexes, so you could lead into a segmentation fault, yeah. So we can, okay, there are actually a lot of ways to turn off the bounds checking. So one way is this, you can use a context manager. Uh, if you just want to uh, use it, uh, see, it's uh, the width bounce check uh, false wrap around false this is just above the loop uh, if you, it means that you want to uh, turn off the bounce check for the next uh, loop so you if you want to do it for the whole function so you can okay no sorry okay yeah 
this was it. So if you want to do it for the whole function, you can use uh, this another, uh, actually you can use a decorator. So it's another form of directive that removes the context manager. So there's one more way if you want to like remove the bounce check like globally across the program. So you can uh, use another compiler directive. It's, you can actually add a, com uh, it's a comment line uh, where bounce check is equal to false and same for the wraparound. So, so this actually it's now the Cytron provides like different scope levels for these directives, one was context manager, second was decorator, this is like global module level. So you can actually have like really precise control over like where these directives are in effect. So they can be easily disabled and for deep, like for debugging and yeah, and e enable for the production runs. So yeah, now your cat can do this, like it has on a like big rocket and it has few laser beams in the eyes and it can, okay, it can also do this. <laughs> it's up to you how much you want to optimize. Okay. So I promise that I'll show you a project demo. Okay, so let's just uh, wrap uh, up, like, what have, we, what have we learned? So we saw how to declare, like, a simple typed memory view. We saw how, like, indexing a typed memory view within, you know, integral argument can efficiently access the memory views underlying buffer. We saw how to use a bounce check and the wraparound directives, and we saw like three different ways. So, uh, so when do we optimize? Like, we just don't go and optimize everything. So, uh, I, yeah, so I borrowed this from Andrew's tutorial again. So, so you first, see, like, you have to actually profile and you have to set benchmarks, like, okay, where do you want to optimize? You just have, so there are some, if you want to, like, re write a really small program, you probably don't need optimization. Uh, you have to, like, know beforehand whether you need it or not. Now you know it. Uh, you can use the minus A uh, tool that I told you earlier. So now you know where the optimization is needed, so you can go ahead and uh, like add static type declarations or any of the other the previous method that I told. Um, yeah. Next. Okay. So this is the project demo. Last year I worked for Portland State University for a Google Summer of Code program. So the project is C by VL feet. It's actually a wrapper for library named VL feet. So VL feet is uh, actually. Uh, so what is VL feet? So uh, VL feet is actually. Um, popular computer vision uh, algorithms library. It actually specializes in image understanding and local feature extraction and matching. So we have a like, couple of algorithms you might know. The SIFT, Scale Invariant Feature Transform, K-means, Hierarchical K-means, and Slick Superpixels, and Quickshift Superpixels. These are like very famous image algorithms. So yeah, these are the algorithms that it has. So, I worked for a company in like India, so they needed to, uh, they were working on a video platform. So what they were trying to do, uh, there was actually, um, so if you see a video and say someone is driving a car and you love that car and you want to know what model is that are like probably the video is really short and you're not able to get, the, the, spot the uh, like, you know, brand of that car. So they were actually trying to make a video advertising platform. So where you can, it, it provides you, a, you know, an interface to run the video where you can actually click on any pixel. So if that pixel belongs to a car, that clicks got saved somewhere and you can see it when the video finishes or probably in, in the middle. So it saves, actually each and every pixel was uh, labeled and it was mapped to the advertisement info. So if that car, so that, if, if that car was like Ford Figo, you can actually see it, and that you can directly go to the advertisement, ad advertiser website or something. So, we were, uh, so there was a lot of object detection uh, uh, involved in that project. So I had to use real feet. Uh, so, so it was like written in MATLAB. And so, like, you know, they don't, companies don't prefer MATLAB, so they asked me to, like, whether you can write few functions, like, you can wrap few functions for Siphon, uh, so for Python. 
So I proposed this project for Google Summer of Code last year, and it got accepted. And I, uh, so it, so project was already in. I didn't realize this, but uh, the project was already in progress by like uh, five researchers of Imperial College of London. They were already working on it, so I contributed along them, along with them. So I like we worked on like 14, 15 features, and they got completed. So yeah, yay. So. You can find it here. It's CYVL Feet is a part of Menpo project, and Menpo was actually in the demo section of last year CVPR, the computer vision, computer vision pattern recognition workshop last year. So you can check it. It's a small part of the big Menpo project. So, so yeah, contributions are welcome for CYVL Feet. You can actually fork it and brand, like create a new feature branch. So I'll also tell you a few limitations of Cython that I faced when I was working on the project. So yeah, these, by the way, yeah, these are the two modules that need more work, and these branches are like, still really active. You can go through, have a look or something. Uh, so uh, I was actually uh, working uh, when I was wrapping this uh, particular library real feed. So there is actually the Binsum module that you can see. It has, uh, so it has like, uh, we were actually taking reference from the corresponding uh, MATLAB interface. They had a MATLAB interface. So there was like, uh, so in, uh, in MATLAB, the structure is quite simple. So there's, when you have a dot, they like dot h file and a mex, which actually provides, there's a mex file, which actually provides the interface between MATLAB or Octave and the functions in like MATLAB and C. The mix, mix files do that, and so the so yeah, so the corresponding uh, Cython implementation would have been .h translate to .pxd and dot, and the cmix uh, translates to .pyx. So that's uh, the you know analogous. So uh, there were no deviations until we finished like 12, 13 uh, features. But when we came to uh, Binsum. There was a file .def, which is the module definition file. So, uh, like, uh, so dot, I'll, I'll give you a brief introduction. What def is? Uh, does anybody know here what dot .def is? Okay, that's okay. So, uh, in Windows, uh, like dot .def describes what functions are going to be exported from the DLL. Uh, so, yeah. so unlike like in GCC Linux, where every symbol gets exported by default. So you have to tell, uh, in Windows, you have to like, tell the compiler what, to, what functions to export. Uh, so, so the standard way of doing it to, is to write .def files. So uh, at that time, I didn't know how to like, wrap this .def file in Cython, how to, what's the analogous. Uh, it wasn't documented anywhere. So yeah, I asked. Like, it's on Stack Overflow. That's uh, the normal way of doing. So uh, yeah, I still can figure it out if somebody knows. You can just talk to me later. So this is the one limitation that I faced uh, with Cython. And the recent, uh, there's one more limitation. Uh, in Python 3, like, they have removed the nested tuple argument unpacking. So yeah, Cython also doesn't support that. So it's a, rec like, it's a recent removal. Uh, the slides are here if you want to like, download it or something. And uh, thank you. Yeah, I finished it really early. OK. <laughs> So any questions or something? We have time for a lot of questions. OK. Um, thank you so much. It's a great talk. And well, personally, I'm going to rate it highly. OK. Yes. Um, I have a question. Uh, do you have any examples of uh, importing or referencing external libraries from Cython? Uh, yes. I have. <laughs> Here we have. So you see this one? Can you see it? Uh, C import libc.maths. So you can directly import uh, uh, the library. And see, uh, OK, there's an example of minus a as well. So you, here uh, it generates, OK, you can actually click on it. Yeah. So this is the, uh, the C code that it generates. So yeah, you should be able to read it if you want to optimize it. So yeah, it takes some time. So it's number four is a bit less yellow since it deals with the direct like C, uh, library that is imported directly from C. So yeah, it's 
it's a really small line, yeah. And that number three, it deals with Python, uh, the def. So here, it's a bit longer, yeah. Is that clear? Correct. Any more questions? Anything else? OK. Thank you so much. Okay. Give her a big hand. Do you have? Do you have?